Welcome all of you. I'm telling you, New Life, I am so excited about the month of July. Anyone with me on the month of July? I, I really am. I think this is, this is our month to come back, come back. Some of us are feeling, not some of us are feeling tired, weary, that the Spirit of God, that God would open up heaven and he would breathe upon us fresh energy and fresh faith and that God would baptize us as a church. I think this is the greatest hour, the greatest moment for the church. Let me tell you, a pandemic is not going to shut down the church, everybody. Amen? Come on. A pandemic, we, Jesus said, I will build my church. And, I, and the gates of hell will not prevail. There's nothing going to come against it. And I believe more than ever that as we review what's happened through 2020, as we look back and we give deep reflection, I really believe that as we write about it and tell the story, we will see the hand of God in everything that's going on. So welcome to New Life. Welcome to New Life. Those online, drive in. I don't care how you're, how you're involved with church. You may be at a campground right now. Some of you may be on the beaches of Hawaii, which I would just say this, I'm jealous right now. Anyone jealous about the Hawaii people? <laughs> so the month of July is comeback month, comeback month. Next Sunday, we are going to open up our doors, and we're believing for um, just significant things throughout the month of July. By the way, at the end of July, we're going to do like a three-week um, um, summer revival. And we'll talk about that later. But maybe you know we need some revival in there. Come on, we need some revival. And so um, we're going to be doing that. But here's what we're going to do is uh, online, online, 10 online. Here's what we're saying with the month. No one do church alone. No one do church alone. No one do church alone. We can't one another, one another without one another. Come on, right? We can't one another, one another without one another. We need community. So no one do church alone. Go back over here. Go back here. Meet up. Many people are meeting up with life groups in their backyard, in their house, meeting up with friends, family. Meet up or drive in and tailgate. We want to have a big drive in tailgate party all summer. How many people are ready for that? Come on, right? We're, we are turning our parking lot into a party, tailgating, drive in. It's fun to see that right now. And then open seating. We will have open seating in all of our auditoriums. Um, in the main auditorium, North Auditorium, Lobby, and if we have to go to the chapel, we have a lot of auditoriums here. We're going to keep on opening up auditoriums, having open seating, and we believe that July is a, a providential month. It's a month for the church to continue to step up and truly believe the best is yet to come, that God wants to open up heaven and, and breathe upon us the wind of the Spirit. Right now, standing up here, I could, I could, you can feel the wind of the Spirit. You can feel wind right now. It's, it's something amazing about the wind of the Spirit that will pour out upon us as a church. So are you ready for July, everybody? You ready? Come on. Here we go. Now, this weekend, uh, I want to just continue with last week we talked about the covenant love, that we live in a world full of hatred, a world, a world that's polarizing, a world that is a bitter, an angry world. We live in a culture right now where the church needs to be the church, it, where we need to step up and believe God to pour out His Spirit. And we're in the middle of the series over Proverbs where we're looking at this one word called listening, where I believe that we as a church, we need to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying, what God is saying to His church. Oh, New Life, this opportunity, we can't miss it. It's a moment in history where we need to have a keen understanding that God is speaking to us. He wants to open a heaven and help us as a church to remember things that we'll never forget and build on, that we want to listen to what God is saying. We want to listen to each other. Instead of trying to be right, we want to care for people. We want to be aware of what's going on and listen to each other. We want to be a church that will listen to wisdom, which we're going to talk about in a moment, and listen to the Spirit of God. New Life, our challenge is that we would be a church that we would not necessarily live or even give the false image that we have all the right answers. But I'm telling you, as we listen to God, as we listen to the Spirit, as we listen to wisdom, wisdom, God wants to speak. And New Life, my prayer is that we would not listen 
to just what's happening in our culture, but that we would be a church of godly wisdom. I pray this for every new lifer. I pray this for every one of us, that we would be a church that as we're facing circumstances, a watershed moment in our culture, God, help us to see beyond the obvious. Help us to see what you see. Help us to be your church. Help us to have godly wisdom. Last weekend, we talked about the need that the greatest hour, what's the greatest hour, what's the greatest need in this hour? I think the greatest need in our hour that we're living in is what I would call covenant love, covenant love. We talked about that last weekend, that there would be a supernatural, godly covenant love we would have for one another. And we would have that covenant love even for people that have opposing views, that God, we would be compelled by love as Paul talked. He called it the most excellent way, 1 Corinthians 13, that we would be a church compelled by the covenant love of God, and this weekend that we would be a church that would have godly wisdom, godly wisdom. Now, regardless where you're at, if you're watching online or here driving, everyone say godly wisdom. Say it out loud, godly wisdom. Come on, come on, godly wisdom that we would be a church, that we would be baptized, we would be immersed and godly wisdom for such a time as this. Now, we're defining wisdom really from the book of Proverbs, but wisdom is the righteous expression of belief and behavior. What wisdom is, is taking what we believe and how we behave and making them congruent, bringing them together. In other words, I believe this, but I behave this way, and how many of you know it's easy to believe something and yet not do it? Wisdom, says, I'm going to be congruent. I'm going to take covenant love. I'm going to take the word of God, and I'm going to be congruent. I'm going to have an expression of the love of God to the world. Another working definition of wisdom that I really like is wisdom is a gift from God. Come on, people know it only comes from God. You can't get wisdom by yourself. The Bible says that the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And wisdom is this, is to see as God sees, is to have God's perspective on what's going on in America right now. It's to see it not through my lens, but to see it through God's lens, what's happening, see as God sees, and more importantly, to act as God wants us to act, to behave as Christians, to behave that we still believe Jesus is Lord, to behave in such a way that we, are, we understand none of this catches God by surprise, but that we would be a church that would have that kind of wisdom. And I pray this for every new life. I pray this for every family. I pray this for those of you watching other parts of the world, that you're here, that God would help us to see what he sees right now, to act the way he would act, and not view it through the lens of culture or the lens of television or the lens of social media, but help us to view it through the lens of the Bible, through the lens of theology, through the lens of the fact that Jesus is still Lord. And so that is the wisdom of God. And I pray this for new life in the name of Jesus. Come on, how many people will pray that in Jesus' name? Amen? Amen and amen. Now, I want us to take a look at an incredible passage. The book of Proverbs was written Um, by many different authors, but one of the authors, his name is Solomon, King Solomon. And we're going to look at Proverbs in a moment, but Solomon, we are, we, we are, we see the life of Solomon in 2 Chronicles. And what's going on here, there are three kings over the nation of Israel that we learn about in the Bible, Um, King Saul, King David, and King Solomon. These are the kings, the tale of three kings, where the, literally the Spirit of God raises up these leaders to ray, to, to lead the nation of Israel. What we're going on here is Solomon is coming into his leadership. This is the moment for King Solomon, the son of David, is the leader. David has just died. Now Solomon is the leader. He's leading the nation, the people of God. Can you imagine how Solomon felt with the responsibility of leading an entire nation? And what happens is that one night God appears to Solomon and said to him, God says this to Solomon, ask for whatever you want me to give you, ask for whatever you want me to give you, and I will give it to you. 
Now pause there. Pause there. God the Father appears to Solomon. He says, what do you need? Ask for whatever you need right now, and I will give it to you. New Life, what's the greatest need right now? What is our prayer? And what's fascinating, when you read the narrative, Solomon could have asked for many things. He could have asked for, like, wealth, all the treasures of the nation of Israel. He could have asked for health. He said, I could be healthy, or possessions, or honor. It even says he could have asked for the death of his enemies. <laughs> now, maybe you know, sometimes we've all been there, right? Like, God, destroy the people around me. He could have asked for a long life. But what he asked for is so profound for me. It is so rich. It is so beautiful. God the Father says, what do you want? I'll give it to you. And Solomon says this, Lord, here's what I need. If I'm going to lead... I need God, give me wisdom and knowledge. Come on, say that out loud. Give me wisdom and knowledge. Give me wisdom and knowledge. Remember, he could have asked for riches and health and long life. And he says, no, God, what I desperately need right now, I need the wisdom of God. I need discernment. I need you to speak to me, God. Right now, what America needs is not simply just answers. We need the voice of God. We need God's ideas, God's insights. We need wisdom and knowledge, and he goes on, that I may lead these people, that I may actually lead the people of God for who is able to govern these great people of yours. King Solomon, he says, God the Father, I need wisdom. I need knowledge. New Life, can I suggest what we need is not just more answers and more information and more, more, more. What America needs is a great dose of the Spirit of God to give us wisdom, to give you wisdom, to give the church wisdom, to really understand that there's no piece of information, there's no place we can look to but God and God alone. Lord, give us wisdom, give us knowledge. And here's what God says to Solomon. He says, since this is your great heart's desire, since your heart's in the right place, here's what I'm going to do. Therefore, wisdom and knowledge will be given you. Therefore, wisdom, knowledge, discernment, prudent behavior will be given to you. In New Life, what I want us to do is I want us to start praying and crying out to God. Lord, we're not asking for all these other things. There's a lot of things we could ask for. We could ask, Lord, take away everything and take away all the tension, whatever, whatever. But in this moment, would we be a church that would say, Lord, in the middle of all of us, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, more important than wealth and more important than long life, more important than even the death of my enemies. God, I need wisdom. I need knowledge. And I pray that for new life in the name of Jesus. Now, now one of the questions that have come my way by texting, by email, by social media, is a question that many people have asked me, what do you need, Pastor? What, what, what can we do for you? And this question, let me tell you, new life, is why of all the pastors, all the elders, and why my wife and I, why we have felt so much love during this time of encouragement, this one question. I want to answer that question. There are two things that we need from you as a church right now. Number one is prayer for wisdom. Would you pray for new life? Would you pray that prayer, Lord, give us wisdom and knowledge? God, give us direction. Would you pray that with the limited amount of information we have, we keep up on all information going on at all times, that as we have our comeback Sunday, as we're believing our park lot's going to be one big tailgate party and our, in, our auditorium, our North Auditorium, we're going to open up and give us wisdom when to open up Kent and Maple Valley. Give us wisdom, Lord. Give us wisdom. Would you pray for that? Would you pray for that, that God would give me as your pastor and the entire staff wisdom? And number two is keep engaged. Don't get isolated. Don't allow the enemy to isolate you. Don't allow the enemy to discourage you. Keep connected. Keep praying. Keep coming to church. Keep engaged online. I realize some of you, 
When you think about even online, I'm, you're, you're tired of Zoom. How many of you are tired of Zoom in the name of Jesus, right? <laughs> but we got to keep engaged. We can't give up. We have to keep connected, keep praying, keep caring for people, keep giving, keep, keep faithful and engaged. Because I believe the best is yet to come for the glory and honor of our God and Savior. Keep engaged. Paul said it like this in Galatians. He says, he says let us not become tired and weary and doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. New Life, I believe the harvest is coming. I believe July is going to be a month where we're going to see all the beauty of the church coming back together as we really march into the fall. I pray, would you, would you pray for wisdom? Would you keep engaged? Don't get isolated. Come on, we need one another like never before. You can't one another, one another without one another. We need the body of Christ. And I'm asking you to keep praying for wisdom and knowledge and keep engaged. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Now, what I want to do in our study of Proverbs, what we see here, a couple scriptures, this is King Solomon passing this wisdom on to his son. And I think it's so critical because what Proverbs is, is a full, is a book full of insights and wisdom and nuggets and axioms that says, here's how you're supposed to live this out. This is a righteous behavior. This is God, see us how God sees it, act as God's God acts. And here King Solomon is saying to his son, he's saying, my son, here's what I want from you. Do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. My son, he says, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Don't be clouded by everything going on. Hold on, <laughs> hold on to wisdom. Hold on to insight. Don't lose focus of it in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a watershed moment for us as a, as a culture and world. Don't let wisdom out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment. Oh, this word sound judgment, I think the greatest need for America right now is we need some leaders with sound judgment. We need the church to have sound thinking. And Solomon says to his son, hold on to sound the judgment, to discretion. Hold on to wisdom. Don't let it go. In the middle of everything spinning out of control, he's going, hold on to wisdom and insight, discretion. Hold on. And he goes on and he says this, they will be life for you. I love this. They will speak life into you. They will be your lifeline and an ornament to grace your neck. I love this metaphor. If you're new to new life, I just love the Bible. Come on, how many people love the Word of God? And, and I love the image that Solomon is painting. He's saying, your neck, you need to put ornament on it. One of beauty. One that will smell pretty. One that you will grace your neck with the ornament of the wisdom of God. Grace your neck with wisdom. Grace your life with sound judgment. He said, I want that for you. Now, for me, when I look at this, I'm like, like thinking about Hawaii. Come on, right? I'm thinking about Hawaii here. But it's a beauty. It's, it's that smell. Let your life be grace. Your neck be, have an ornament of grace and wisdom on your life. In your life, so many of us, when we think about the ornament around our neck, it's one of anger and confusion and bitterness. And I pray for the church that we would put on the ornament of wisdom that we would live it out, and the day that we just don't have all the answers, we get that, but we have the wisdom of God. As believers, as ones that believe in the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we bow our knee that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. We give reverence to God, and we live out godly wisdom every day. Last week in covenant love, this week in godly wisdom, that we would be that kind of church. And he goes on and says this, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. I love that. That when we go to sleep, you won't be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. I think this is so important. This is my prayer for you. That when we're by ourselves and we go to our beds and we fall asleep, that we would have sleep that is sweet. 
the presence of God would be upon your light. That regardless of what you're facing, regardless of what's going to happen tomorrow on the news, regardless of what is going to happen, the news that we're going to face this entire year, 2020, Lord, let our sleep be sweet. Let us have a trust in something that is deeper than culture will give us, and that trust is in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He said, my son, hold on to this. Don't let it go. Man, we need to pass this on to the next generation. We need to pass this on to our kids. And he goes on and he says this, have no fear of sudden disaster or the ruin that overtakes the wicked. Have no fear. <laughs> have no fear of sudden disaster. Have no fear because your trust is in God. Your trust is in something greater. Have no fear. It says this, for the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared, will keep your foot from being broken or, or, or destroyed, will keep your foot solid. God, new life, come on, do we believe this or not? God is on our side. And I'm telling you, perhaps the greatest lesson or the greatest anchoring point of all this is to know that at the end of the day, it's not by might, not by spirit, but it's the spirit of God that builds this church. Now, ultimately, the church is bigger than a building. It's bigger than a pandemic. It's bigger than, bigger than a culture spinning out of control. The church, the hands and feet of Jesus, that's the church that I believe God wants to rise up in this moment that would heal our land, turn from our wicked ways, and we would pray. The church that says we're not going to live with the wisdom of the world, but godly wisdom. We're going to have covenant love. We're going to be a church that will listen. We're going to be a church that will be the voice of God. My prayer for every new lifer, the month of July. Come on, next week. No one do church alone. No one. To attend online. Gather with some friends. Do meet up. Find a way to engage. Come together and do drive-in tailgate parties. Let's bring barbecues out. Let's have church together, everybody. Come on. Let's do open seating. Let's have church the month of July. I realize sometimes July can be a little bit of vacation month, but I think it's the month that God wants to pour out his spirit. At the end of July, we're going to do a three-week revival where we're going to bring in some key speakers to help New Life understand that God is pouring out his spirit. Let's all come together starting next week, and let's do church. I pray this in Jesus' name. I pray this over you and your life. I pray that we would not be afraid. I pray our sleep would be sweet. I pray that God would give you wisdom and knowledge. I pray that God would baptize you with the spirit of the grace of God. I pray this new life that in the month of July, let's be the church that would not get weary in doing good for if we do not give up, we will reap a harvest in due time. I pray this. I bless you. I pray the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. I pray that the Lord would turn his face upon you. I pray that God would give us strength. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs>